charm. I always think that Sweet Nell of Old Drury was one of the most charming stories in history. Sweet Nell of Old Drury. I suppose they call it Old Drury because they knew there'd be a new Drury one day. Well, she used to sell Nell, used to sell oranges to the gallery queues, you know. This was before Cavalcade. In fact, really, it was in pre-coward days when Rose Marie was on, I think. And King Henry V, who was king at the time, he was a very democratic sort of bloke. And he went down once to the gallery of the Drury Lane Theatre and, you know, he went disguised as one of the gods, Achilles or Hercules or one of those fellows. And he saw Sweet Nell and he said, I'd like to buy one of your winches, because he couldn't pronounce his R's properly. And she said they're fit for a king. And of course he was, and he didn't let her know. He laughed up and down his gauntlet and he bought one. And when he watched the man tearing paper to entertain the queue, he got rather bored because he was thinking of Nell. Finally went into the theatre and he came out the first interval. And uh, being in training for tennis, he didn't take Nell to a pub, but to Peeps's dairy, you see, had a glass of milk with a cherry in it. And when he was there, he told her that he was the king, and she said, oh, would, would he please use his influence to help her to become a star on stage? So he sent the next day for Arthur Collins, who was the manager there, and he told Arthur Collins he'd like this girl on stage. So Arthur Collins gave her a small part, I think it was, and, and said she could be assistant wardrobe mistress too. But uh, anyway, uh, after that, he rather forgot about her because he got some dud tennis balls brought to him by the French ambassador as a present from Louis XV, who you know, the chap who invented the furniture you hear so much about. And so he had a war with France. He went over and he had a frightful battle with that fishy young man, the Dolphin, who was Crown Prince of France at the time. He won the battle. He was in the mess afterwards. They had that famous saying, who wouldn't be at Agincourt on a day like this? Anyway, he got back to England on leave, and Sweet Nell, as she was then, of course, was playing much bigger parts and doing a little film crowd work, too. And uh, he liked her even more than before, but he didn't like the idea of committing a good and morganatic marriage with her, I think it's called. Especially as his, his mother, Queen Elizabeth, wanted him to marry a paragon, captain of paragon, as a matter of fact. So he sent for Nell and he said, I'm awfully sorry, but I can't possibly marry you, you see. And so she cried a lot, because she was a very good actress by now, and he said, don't cry, Gwyn and bear it. And so she was always known as Nell Gwyn after that. Rather charming story, don't you think? But of course, he was a perfect little gentleman. <laughs> You can always tell a gentleman, wherever he may be, and if he is dressed in any sort of garb. And there are just three institutions, I'm sure you would agree, and that absolutely make the pucker sound. The preparatory school, the public school, and the varsity. Produce a type of fellow of whom is a scarcity. Uh, where do they learn the French for spuds, aïe les pommes de terre? Where do they learn that bacon was a man, not breakfast fare? and the Woolsey was a cardinal, as well as underwear. At the preparatory school, the public school, and the varsity, our universities and schools fill pages of who's who. They also put the L into a legion. The playing grounds of Eton won the war of Waterloo, and to Harrow, you must go from Baker Street. Preparatory school, public school, varsity. Produce a type of fellow from the scarcity. Where do they learn just heaps and heaps and also lots and lots? Where do they learn what's done by sobs and also all the knots? Or where do they get their faces full of most peculiar spots? And the preparatory school, the public school, and the varsity.